From United Nations Television, this is UN in Action. It's like you you crying out for help, but nobody comes to your rescue. Nobody is able to hear your cries. When Oyama Mbopa was viciously attacked, her cries also went unanswered. Cape Town is South Africa's main tourist destination. But in the nearby township where Oyama lives, the levels of violence are staggering. Interpol estimates that one in every two women will be raped in her lifetime. And gay women like Oyama are even more vulnerable. It's not easy being a lesbian in the township. We are always targeted. And men are always trying to show us that at the end of the day we are women. Oyama was dragged to a passage between some shacks and brutally raped. She was a schoolgirl, already openly gay, and just 15 years old. There's no doubt in her mind exactly why she was attacked. Uh, because of my sexuality, so that we can all be cured, so that we can start dating men, and we can all just be straight. It's what they call curative rape. Curative, or corrective rape, as it's often called, is now an everyday fear for most gay women in South Africa. Gay activist groups estimate that 10 lesbians are raped per week in Cape Town alone. And since 1998, more than 30 of these hate crimes have led to the victim's death. Discriminatory attitudes against homosexuals are deeply entrenched here, sometimes even within their own families. Oyama told her mother she was a lesbian when she was 13 years old. There was this thing new, new, new to me. It was a shock. I said, this is witchcraft, my child. I used to be there. I used to be there. I used to be there a lot. It took Oyama's mother eight long years to finally accept her daughter's sexuality. It changed my whole life to just hear her telling me how much she loves me and she has accepted my sexuality. Yes, I did accept my child as she is and I love her, I love her. But to protect the rights of all gay people here, the South African laws to protect homosexual rights must be implemented, says Edwin Cameron, Justice of the South African Constitutional Court. We've got to change attitudes on the part of, of the public, police officials, people like myself, judges and lawyers, magistrates. There's a lot of work to be done in making it easier for lesbians to report rape. And Nomsibo Mancini, chief of the South Africa UN Women Office, agrees. The South African government, I think, has done well in terms of the legislation. They need also to ensure that when gays and lesbians experience rape and murder, they can follow up as quickly as, as possible before the evidence uh, disappears. <laughs> Although Oyama saw her attacker caught and sentenced to five years, the memories of her attack can't be erased. But she is determined to remain true to who she is, until such a time that she and all the other women like her are accepted and they can walk free from fear. Just because I was a victim of rape, I'm not going to dwell on that. I'm going to study, I'm going to be someone, and I want him to see me tomorrow as a successful woman.
This report was produced by Jill Fickling for the United Nations.